guess it's all real now. We get our first bout of injury news that will affect us in season 2024. I don't think it will affect too much of the season, but nonetheless, it's not great news. It's not ideal. Jacob Wiedering has suffered a high-grade calf strain, which will see him sideline for an extended period of time. That's all we have at the moment. I've seen reports of one month out. I've seen reports of six to eight weeks out. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it'll be an extended period of time. He may miss some games at the start of the season, and it's just not ideal. It's not the worst news, uh, but it certainly isn't the best news. This time last year, we're talking about you know Sam Walsh having back surgery, Cottrell with the stress fractures in his foot, I think it was. Uh, we would soon hear about Zach Williams doing his ACL. So I, I actually thought we were doing pretty good. There's usually that trepidation for me going into the Christmas break because I'm just so used to seeing, you know, a 22nd of December injury update. Uh, that's something I've experienced, we've experienced for <laughs> many years now. So we were doing pretty well. And this injury, while it might be on the more severe end of the scale in terms of the calf strain for Jacob Wiedering, touch wood, it doesn't seem like it's going to keep him out for the majority of the season. If anything, he will only miss, it seems like, a month of football. Now, first thing is to Jacob Wiedering. Hopefully, he's okay. I'm sure he'll be fine. He'll do his rehab and get himself right. It puts a spotlight on an area of the ground that I think we've all been talking about for a while in Jacob's position being the most valuable on the ground. And I'm going to talk about a video that I did last year in a moment, but we haven't had this part of the ground tested for some time. Wiedering played 26 games last year, won the best and fairest. So we haven't, Touchwood, have to, had to worry about him missing games since 2022. And we saw the effect of that. I can recall it right now. He bumps Jordan to go in and our 2022 season goes along with his shoulder, his AC joint at the time. So it's prompted me to think about what are the solutions moving forward. Now, we only just recently did a, a video, a best 22 video for the defenders and Wiedering's the first picked. So the question then goes to what happens? Do you think about, you know, is it a Sam Durden like for like? Lewis Young, like for like, or do you shuffle the pieces around and bring in a Chincotta, bring in a Boyd, shuffle March Bank McGovern into the key position posts and, and sort of work around it? That's my first question to you. What does your mind go to in terms of what's the solution? I think it also highlights what we were talking about with Chincotta and Boyd. These are guys that when I speak to a lot of you, a lot of you have Boyd and Chincotta just at that lower end of the rung in the best 22, maybe just missing out, whereas this now might provide them with an opportunity. And it also shows how important the experience is for them in the sense of what they were able to achieve in 2023. So I'm not so worried about the coverage. I think we'll be fine. I think we won't be at our best for however many games Weedering does miss. But it also led me to think about a video that I did about a, month, about a year ago and it was who are our most important players for 2023. So I thought I would revisit the list of five most important and ask you again to recap your list. Now, last year, I kind of cheated. I'm not going to lie. I kind of sat on the fence a bit. So I had I had Weedering at one. I had Pittenet at two. Cripps at three. Charlie slash Harry at four. And then Saad slash Hewitt at five. So I'm, I'm going to update the list based off what we know about 2024 and the context that we have at the time of filming this. And at the end, I'll ask you to fill in your top five. So I actually still think Weedering is our most important and most valuable player, pretty much for the same reasons as what I said last year. He is the anchor of the defense. We are a defense first side. He defends at an elite level one-on-one. -on -one. He intercepts at an elite level. He's got all the ability, the leadership skills, the cool, calm, and collectedness under pressure. And there is nobody on the list like him. And we feel it when he doesn't play. We, we certainly feel the loss. Next, I'm going to say Charlie Kerno as our second most important, um, purely based off what we were able to see in 2023, how many games he was able to 
take by the scruff of the neck and you know i can think of three or four games straight away that i don't know if we win those games if he doesn't play you know talking about gold coast collingwood geelong uh, just off the top of the head gws uh, early in this in 2023 and so i think for that reason you know being the game winner that he is uh, he is my second most important player harry's my third Seeing Harry not play and seeing how it affected Charlie is the reason why I think Harry's next. I mean, you could put them on the same level, but I think where one sits, the other one needs to sit close by. You know, what Harry does around the ground is crucial for us, does it at a very high level. Um, When he is not kicking straight, which we saw that in 2023, we still saw how effective and how impactful he can be on game. So it does make you wonder what happens when Harry gets his kicking boots back. So uh, for that reason, Harry is my third. Cripps is my fourth. Um, I don't think we rely on his output as much as what we used to, but I think Cripps being, you know, the total package, the what you get on field, especially now that he brings other people into the game and makes them better, what you get off field, the leadership aspect, the I don't know if the word is burden, but the you know the the weight that he carries being the captain of the Carlton Football Club, uh, he's still very important for the total package. So he's my fourth, and then my fifth most important player heading into twenty twenty four is Adam Saad. I do not take Adam Saad for granted. I said this last year, and I think it still remains very true. He has an ability to make things look boring or easy and that for me is a sign of a great player the ones that make it look simple he does the basics right he defends at a high level he kicks the ball at a high level when he's playing at his best we are most likely winning games of football and i just place a lot of value on what he brings to the team and i think when he doesn't play which we haven't seen it much but when he doesn't play you certainly feel it when he does play he seems to blend in a bit more and you know plays his role but uh, make no mistake I place a really high value on what Saad does um, you know so those are my five heading into 2024 uh, Jack Martin was my next one off the rank if uh, if you were wondering I think that half forward dynamic with us is important we we haven't been able to figure that out consistently just yet you know we, we saw Jack Martin in the second half of 2023 and we saw how much better everything else around the, the forward line operates when he's there. So, you know, hopefully we're seeing a full season of Jack Martin and, you know, maybe he's up further up higher on this list when we do it this time next year. But a few questions. Number one, what was your reaction to the weedering news? Uh, I don't think anyone was happy with it, but just from the standpoint of what's your solution? Are you bringing in a Lewis Young or a Sam Durden or are you shuffling it around and just playing with a, a Chincotta or a Boyd coming in in your your back six or your back seven. And then the second part of the question is, who are your top five most important players heading into 2024? Let me know in the comments. We'll chat about it there. We'll discuss it there. And we will revisit this video in a year's time. Go Blues.